I'm actually okay. I'm, we had a great show. So as long as the show is good, it's all fine. All right. Yeah. yeah, you guys have been together for a very long time now. Since 91, you started it. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, you're, you're down with Trio now, so hopefully that's going to be permanent. Um, how long have you had the, the three of you together? Well, we recorded two records, The Apostasy, the last one, and Demiga, the one before, uh, which I consider the, the strongest behemoth albums so far. So I would guess, and I would say, I mean, well, that's my wish, you know, to, to keep this lineup as long as possible, you know. But then it's, you know, it's human beings, you know. They just, right. sometimes, you know, they just decide to to go like a different way, you know. But uh, I think, I mean, so far so good, you know, it's, it's going fucking good, you know. It's solid, it's concrete. You should be working fine for the next one, at least, you know. So Excellent. I, I, I have like a good hopes for the future, really. Okay. Um, well, the name Behemoth, you know, you guys have a lot of mythology in there. You know, you've got Nurgle, Orion, Seth, all of that stuff. Do you find that maybe that makes your fans maybe more interested in reading, like about that kind of stuff? I hope that it's intrigue to people, you know, that, you know, there's no, like, John and Jim and Bob, you know right. what I mean? <laughs> we should be fucking, you know, so... But, uh, the, of course, that, that's not the reason why we pick up these names. It's, it, there's always a meaning behind it that it's, you know, it gives uh, significance to, you know, to what we do. And there's always some kind of, you know, sinister, evil meaning behind it. Because that's what this band is all about. It's about exploring that, you know, the dark side of human nature. Right. More or less. I mean, to, you know, to keep it, you know, to keep the long story short, you know, it's all about the dark side. And um, I think it just suits the, the whole vision, the whole picture of what Behemoth is. Right. That's why, that's why I picked up these names, yeah. Okay. Who would you say is maybe your biggest musical influence? Wow, that's too many to mention, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. It's just, it's too many, really. I mean, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a geek, you know, I listen to like, I still like buy lots of records, you know. I look for inspiration pretty much anywhere in any genre, you know. So I can tell you that it's pretty much everyone from Morbid Angel, of course. Right. And you know, <laughs> you name it, that it's gonna be my guts, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's 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 actually the, the one of the most difficult questions. <laughs> Wow, I didn't think it would be, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, if you check my iPod, you know, or my, you know, CD or LP collection, it's, it's massive, it's thousands of records, you know. Right. And, ask, uh, and then tell me, ask, you know, just pick up like 10 favorites. I'm like, this is always the most problematic thing for me, you know. Right. Yeah, it's all, it, it all depends on the mood I am in, what music I listen to, you know. When I get into this writing regime, you know, mm -hmm. I, I listen to certain stuff, you know. Then when i on tour, I pretty much don't listen to any like extreme stuff. Okay. I listen to like, you know, more like a, you know, relaxing music or rock and right. roll oriented music. So it really depends on, on you know, on in which, w what mood I am. Okay. Well, on a little bit of a serious note, um, recently we lost um, yeah. VTech from Decapitated. Did you know him personally? Yes, I did. We toured uh, with Decapitated in 2000 and uh, I knew him. I mean, no, we were not like, best friends right. you know but we were colleagues and uh, right. I respected them a lot as a band still do I think that uh, well what can I say I mean I, I hope that they can they can still make it in the future as a band but I was uh, it's awful you know what happened is just it's it makes no sense to me right. and there's no logic behind it it's just it's just terrible mm. but what we have to do we gotta you know move on and just you know remember him as, you know, he was a great person. Right. And uh, from like, I remember it was, uh, uh, shit. It was like a few shows back, you know, I dedicated one of the shows to VTech and it seems like that since then every show, there's at least, you know, a few moments right. during the show that I think about him. I, I, I don't really talk about it to people, but I think about it, you know, so. Like this thought about you know what happened really crossed my mind you know several times, and I like even you know, I might like wake up you know and just first thought you know is is this I'm like it's, that's bad you know it's still very abstract to me I'm like it's you know it's something you read on the news and it, it didn't really get to me yet you know right. what I mean what can I say it's 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 a huge loss, you know. Definitely. We'll be doing. We'll be probably doing some charity show. Okay. 
in Poland in January to support their families and uh, we might be putting some stuff on eBay or somewhere just to gather some you know to sell some items right. in order to gather some collect some money for their families that's what we can do okay. well let's talk about a little bit about the apostasy you know you it debuted what at 149 on the billboard top 200 excellent yeah not bad, <laughs> not bad. could be better <laughs> well what does that make it your ninth full-length album it's eighth eighth Okay. And, um, you know, uh, let's talk a little bit about the word apostasy itself, you know, meaning like uh, departing from your religious or your political beliefs. Was it more of like maybe a comment on things that are going on like in Poland right yeah, now? Yeah, it or is Or is it more personal? I think it, it has like, you know, it depends on angle, you know. Yeah. It depends how you see it. I mean, you can approach it, you know, from pretty much an angle. And uh, I think there's like a deeper uh, philosophical meaning behind this term and not just you know despiting you know religion or whatever right. it's something deeper behind it you know okay. so um, yeah it, 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 in a way it's a comment to what was happening in Poland at that time and still it's happening you know well you've got some elections coming out don't you yeah, the, yeah, uh, twins yeah. over there yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> twins are no more <laughs> But uh, it's just, I think there's nothing more than, uh, this is not just a political comment, that would be just too, um, yeah, I'm look, always looking for like a deeper sense, you know, of things. So I really think that the apostasy, at least for me, has like a really deep meaning. And it seems like my life, you know, has always been about, you know, rebelling against something. And the apostasy is like a, it's a perfect description of, of, of human conscience, I would say, you know. Once you become conscious, you start questioning things, right. and eventually you, you know, you rebel against certain things in your life. Definitely. That's what my life has been all about. You know, I mean, being in this band is not about conforming. Right. It's about this to, you know, certain people to certain organizations to uh, like corporated stuff mm -hmm. because we're you know we're just underground band, underground extreme band, so. Yeah, I have my reasons to be angry and to be pissed off, and the apostasy just expression of it. Okay. How was Behemoth received in Poland? Is Lately, it? actually, I'm surprisingly well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought there's gonna be some kind of I don't know movement against us, but it seems like like many artists, and not only artists, like it seems like the apostasy sold the best so far in Poland, and I'm like, wow, you know, yeah. especially these days, you know, when it's said. Yeah, the record sales are going down, you know. Right. In our case, since, I don't remember when, probably since like Satanica record or something, our sales are always like growing bigger and bigger with every next record. Right. But then again, we always work harder and harder for every night record, so it's maybe the, you know, the effect. I was going to say, aren't you the hardest working band in metal? Yeah, everyone said, you know, <laughs> I picked it up, you know, because I don't really know many bands that do, that, that work that hard. I mean, there's, there's many bands that work hard, right. you know. I just, um, I know that Mastodon does, but, you know, at least as many shows as we do. I know that back in the days Biohazard did like 300 shows per year. And then I was like, wow, I mean, they were better, you know what I mean? They right. did more shows, you know, they did more touring. But uh, what can I say? Are we going to be more like a selective now? We'll be picking up like the best offers. Okay. So I'm not sure if we'll be doing like 300 shows to every next <laughs> record because you know it was with them it was just crazy right i think we're gonna end up like doing like two 250 for the apostasy which okay. is still pretty fucking crazy, you know <laughs> definitely well we're always glad to see you please come back to chicago I, you know what i'm i'm actually really surprised because this is our first co-headlining tour in us which means we're pretty much just on our own yes we shot a stage with job for a cowboy and we are responsible i mean if the tour is successful it's our success if it's if it's not if it's failure it's our failure, you know. Right. And so far, it's been way better than I expected. I'm Good. serious, you know. I've, I've never really, you know, thought that our following in the U.S. can be that massive, you know. And it seems like it's growing bigger and bigger. But then again, I know that it's, it's we don't take things for granted. Right. It's it's lots of hard work, you know, that we put behind this success, and uh, we we really appreciate it, and we're gonna cherish it, and we we'll be coming back next spring again. I uh, know details yet, but we're coming back around March, April, and this is going to be the last tour in the U.S. for the apostasy. Okay. 
Then we're gonna take some time off, probably start jamming out new stuff, you know, put up an EP, put out DVD, hopefully. And then 2009 will be back stronger than ever with the ninth record. So yes. <laughs> lots of stuff, lot, there are big things to happen. I got some, some really big things to announce like in upcoming weeks. Yeah, yeah, just, just. Unless you like to tell them. No, no, today. no, I can, I Come can. Come on, oh, Narco. Can, can. <laughs> it's I mean, okay. It's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it seems like, you know, it's going to be a new chapter, you know, open for us. And there's going to be so many new possibilities and uh, offers and, and it's just awesome, you know. I I think that at this stage, you know, after like 16 years of existence or something, <laughs> it's been it's been forever. It's cool to refresh ourselves, to yeah. re re redefine ourselves. Right. So what, you know, with the things that are happening soon or now, we kind of redefine things, you know. So I think, you right. know, with the next record, with the circumstances around it, there's going to be, you know, even more splendor around Behemoth. And I'm just totally looking forward to that. Um, any last words you have for your Rebel Access fans who are going to watch this interview? Wow. <laughs> uh, thanks for welcome and for thanks for uh, support and for, for for having us here it's more than appreciated we 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 do appreciate it a lot so thank you that's all i can say <laughs> all right well you're about to check out some live footage of behemoth 